Friday was World AIDS Day. In fact, uh, the past week has been World AIDS Week, which is a perfect time to talk to my friend and the friend of this program, Mark Allen Derry in New Orleans. Mark Allen is a physician specializing in infectious diseases. He is on the faculty at Tulane Medical School. He is also the, um, the uh, proprietor of um, WHIV in New Orleans radio station. This program is broadcast on this radio station. He and among his areas of interest and in study are the negative impacts of poverty on health, and he works uh, treating HIV patients as well. So, Mark Allen, uh, thanks for coming back on the program. Thanks so much for having me. So this was uh, World AIDS Week. We just had um, World AIDS Day. Uh, what should people know, in your opinion, about AIDS in this country that they don't know? So I think right now, probably the most important thing for uh, people to know is that we're at a point now where we can get HIV to uh, um, to be non-transmitted from person to person through intimate contact. So as you and I were coming up, RJ, it was you know very dramatic to see people die, friends and loved ones, uh, mostly young men, uh, die very, very dramatically uh, as a result of HIV and AIDS. Not only have we reached a point where HIV uh, is now considered a chronic disease, it's no longer do we think about it as being a death sentence, but the medications right now that we have are so good that we can drive people's uh, viral load, that's the amount of HIV that's it, circulating in their bloodstream, we can drive it to undetectable levels. In other words, we're unable to see it via uh, any blood test. We know that they still have HIV, but they're just no, there's no circulating virus. And without any circulating virus, they're unable to transmit to their physical or their, their intimate partners. So we can actually drive these viral loads to undetectable levels and make it such that people don't transmit HIV from one individual to the other, which has tremendous public health uh, implications. You know, that is phenomenally good news, and um, it amazes me, uh, not only that more people didn't know it, but candidly that I didn't know it. And uh, the fact that it's non trans I assume that when this happens, but correct me if I'm wrong, I assume that when this happens, it also means, at least in most cases, that people are pretty much symptom-free as well? Yes, that's a, you're 100% correct. And don't feel bad. Just this morning as I was making rounds in the hospital, I had a colleague say that he saw me on TV a couple days ago and I was having the same conversation and one of my colleagues who's a he's a hospitalist, he's a physician and he works in the hospital, you know, 9 to 5 Monday through Fridays and he himself said I had no idea, you know, so this is, don't feel bad, this is something that's relatively new and there's been a concerted effort for people like myself to kind of be out there trying to let individuals and people know that we're at a point where we can drive these viral loads to undetectable levels such that there, it doesn't transmit from person to person. And the reason why these this is so important, RJ, uh, is that we are now at a point where we can get to zero HIV transmissions, and that's without a cure and without a vaccine. And we've never, in the, in the history of this epidemic, we've never been at this point right now. So we are truly at the cutting edge of, of, of HIV and the science and, and caring for people living with HIV and also preventing HIV transmission. So uh, again, I, I got to tell you, I can't, I can't express how excited and pleased I am to hear that. And maybe in defense of your colleague, the hospitalist, uh, she or he may not have seen very many AIDS patients in the hospital lately uh, as a result of this ability to control. But uh, let me ask you, I assume this involves a lifetime course of medication? That's right. This involves a lifetime course of medication. As of right now, the, uh, the cure for HIV, uh, we're definitely on the hunt for it. It's, it's a little technical, but it's basically waking up cells 
that have HIV in them that are quiet. We call those quiescent T cells. That it, it's highly technical, but the, we are on that hunt, but we're far away, 10, 15, 20 years away. But right now, uh, as when I start people uh, on HIV medications, as I keep people on HIV medications, I tell them that they should just consider that they're gonna be taking them for a lifetime. But in the back of our heads, um, I, you know, I think that it's, it's fair that we're gonna get to a cure at some point, but it, it, it's pretty far down the road that I, I just let people know that just consider taking it for a lifetime for right now. Well, and, and, and you know, you know me, Mark Allendary, I'm very concerned about, first of all, making sure that we understand in this country that healthcare is a right and not huh. a privilege and not a profit center and upending the paradigm, the relationship we have with uh, pharmaceutical uh, industries and pharmaceutical uh, knowledge uh, and profitizing that, if profitizing is a word. So one of the concerns I have is that, you know, uh, the great news is that it sounds like uh, with the proper course of treatment, lifetime treatment, we've effectively controlled AIDS, if not cured it per se, but uh, I'm curious to know what the cost of these medications are and if there is a difficulty in either affording them or accessing them for some patients. So right now, the, uh, the medications are admittedly quite expensive, uh, but uh, there is, uh, uh, certainly with the, the clinics that I run here uh, in New Orleans, they're federally funded. So there are grants out there that help to pay for these medications. So those in my patient population are the most vulnerable Patients. These are those individuals that are living day to day. Um, these are individuals that are fall well below the poverty line, that are homeless, that have multiple diagnoses, uh, including psychiatric and, and, and other drug and alcohol addiction type issues. So I, I work with a very vulnerable population. Uh, and a population that are mostly, if not almost 100% un uninsured and underinsured. And I have no problem getting all of my people on medications and keeping them on medications. And I'm not talking about like it, the automobile equivalent of like a, and I don't mean to knock any car, so I'll use a Pinto or a Toyota. I'm talking about Rolls Royce, you know, class medications. And I've got all my patients on very, very high-end medications. And as long as we fill these grants out on a regular basis, and as long as I stay and do my due diligence to making sure that we're up to date with that, my patients will get the best care. So while I share your concern, obviously, with you, uh, I have a radio show called Health is a Human Right. So I obviously am with you on that. Right now, the ability to access these medications are 100 percent right on the spot and not only that there's also really even i'll even give you even more good news rj we're at a point now where we can actually cure hepatitis c as well and what we have seen is that those individuals that are duly infected with hep c and hiv there is an accelerated decline in both illnesses and so there's a huge push right now with the federal government to get everybody who has duly infected with hep c and hiv to be cured of their hep c component so that it's not accelerated with the HIV. And so those medications are far more expensive oh, than the yeah. HIV medications, the ones that cure hep C. Mm -hmm. But there are lots of programs to get people, and in fact, Louisiana is pushing very, very hard to get those individuals to be cured. And we're going to do that. And part of my professional uh, uh, obligations here at the university is overseeing a program for the state that is looking to cure individuals that are duly infected with hep C and HIV. And I feel very confident that we're going to cure every single person of their hep C in the state of Louisiana that's infected with both hep C and HIV. And those medications are available. Well, first of all, thanks for more good news. We've been covering things like the Republican tax bill all day, and uh, it's nice to hear good news about something. And again, we're talking with Dr. Mark Allen Derry in uh, New Orleans, Louisiana. And uh, so those are both good stories. So let me make sure I understand it. Provided that patients, patients can get continued access to the medication that controls AIDS and, and, and takes the viral levels down to undetectable amounts. Uh, it's n that means it's not 
transmissible. So uh, we, uh, all the concerns we've had about, you know, teaching safe sex and so on, at some point, as long as people are being treated, uh, e even those behavioral issues are not a factor. Doesn't that mean that provided these drugs continue to become available, that over a period of time, uh, we will no longer see uh, AIDS uh, as a phenomenon, that, that, that with the passage of time, uh, there will be no new patients, and therefore the disease, whether a cure is found or not, has a limited lifespan on the earth. So uh, obviously that is a great question, RJ, and that is obviously the next big, big topic to talk about. And yes, you know, I would like to see us, we are at a point now where we can be the first HIV-free generation, where we can drive HIV transmissions to zero, and we refer to that as getting to zero. There are a couple issues with that. One is, unfortunately, there's still quite a stigma associated with HIV. In, the, in Louisiana, in New Orleans particularly, about one in five people who have HIV don't know they have HIV, and that has largely to do with the social determinants of health, such as poverty, whereas a state like Colorado or New York, those numbers are like one in eight. So in other words, more people with HIV in states that are, have a little bit more financial resources, their, their citizens know that they have HIV. In Louisiana, they don't. So. Uh, a, a small portion of people, for example, one in five, 20 percent of people living with HIV in New Orleans don't know they have it, but they're responsible for a majority of those HIV mm -hmm. transmissions. Now, put a pin in that and look at globally, one in two people don't know they have HIV. That's 50 mm -hmm. percent of people living with HIV don't know they have HIV, and that's an enormous problem. <laughs> so it, it, HIV testing is single-handedly the most important thing that we can do. One of the things that I do in my internal medicine part of my practice, I do a little bit of internal medicine and mostly HIV, is that I have nuns that are my patients, and I test all of my nuns for HIV, and they always laugh, and they're like, why are you testing me for HIV, Dr. Derry? And I tell them, I'm testing them because I want to be able to test, if I can test you for HIV, and I can test my parents for HIV, I can test anybody for HIV. And that's one of the ways that we can destigmatize the, the, the disease process and really encourage HIV testing. Because once we know, and once we've tested everybody for HIV, we can get to what you were talking about, was we can drive this virus completely uh, to undetectable levels. And once we have a global, uh, a wide, undetectable viral load, then yes, it's impossible to transmit the virus. And then ultimately, we could eradicate the virus that way. It's a far away dream, but you know, what, what people may refer to as a moonshot. But I think it's a doable one. And that's one that I'm very motivated uh, and super uh, enthusiastic to try to get to. Well, I think it would be a great uh, global cause. And uh, I, I'll, I'll get to the moonshot thing in a second. You know, when I, when I was in Africa, AIDS transmission was uh, a big problem in terms of uh, the eastern part of the continent. Truck drivers, in this case heterosexual transmission, being carried down the trucking routes and so on. Uh, so uh, clearly it would need to be a global initiative. As for the moonshot, you know, Mark Allen, I've always been bugged by, you know, the idea of the cancer moonshot or the this moonshot, meaning the high investment in technology. We know how to cure many cancers with prevention. And so the kind of moonshot that is not the high technology moonshot, but the kind of moonshot that you're talking about is we know how to do it. We need the collective will and the collective organization to do it uh, on a global level. To me, I think that's a great 21st century cause we should all be fighting for. Thank you. Yeah, that's certainly what I have been have been doing. And, and, and as I kind of approach uh, the second half of my career, that is 100% what I am going to be doing is, is getting to zero. And let me just say real quickly that San Francisco and their Department of Health, they were able to reduce their HIV transmission in the city of San Francisco in three years by 50%. They decreased HIV transmission by 50% in three years just by doing a couple of, of basic public health interventions, uh, uh, pre-exposure prophylaxis, uh, you know, 
you know, some prevention, some treatment stuff. They basically sat a group of folks into a room together uh, that were all HIV providers, and they all kind of unified and collaborated and did some basic public health interventions. And in three years, they reduced their uh, transmission rate by 50%. And I think that that San Francisco model is an incredibly important one for all of us to be able to look toward and emulate. Well, consider me your ally in that goal, that Getting to Zero project, because so I think it's a great cause. And Dr. Mark Allen Derry uh, in New Orleans, Louisiana, WHIV radio station, and uh, T-Cell Clinic, and all the other great work you do. Thanks for that great work, and thanks for coming on the program. Thank you so much for having me, RJ. I appreciate it.